in the new set of Warrior Cats books, we're presented with a River Clan mystery. That said, we're not really given all the facts or anything that really points in a clear direction, or generally just anything that's actually solvable with the information we have. My goal with this video is to present all of the relevant River Clan evidence we have and a general profile of all the cats involved. I won't be getting into, well, not too much, how silly I think their decisions are for this video in particular. I'm going to just take the cat's anxieties and lack of real personalities at face value for the sake of whatever mystery that they're trying to present. I'm also going to be telling this out of order, mystery first, and also there will be spoilers. Spoilers for River and spoilers for the new preview per Sky. So Reed Whisker is found dead at the bottom of a cliff in the RiverClan border with Two Lake Place. His body is on top of rocks, his neck is twisted unnaturally, his body looks like he was fighting something, and his teeth are bared aggressively. Frostpaw points out that the scratches on his back resemble an attack from a badger. She's a baby and has never seen a scratch from a badger, but this is still relevant. Her mother, Curlfeather, immediately corrects her and insists that she got them falling down the rocky cliff. First of all, with this being heavily presented as mystery and not fact by the books, I don't think we should have doubts that Reed Whisker has been killed by something and not simply fallen into the hole while being a clumsy, silly deputy who's been living on RiverClan's territory for, uh, ten years with this cliff. We know that Reed Whisker then made it to StarClan because we see him there at the start of the next book's preview. Which thankfully means that there's no weird Ashfur-like entity collecting ghost souls and putting them in a hole right now. While Reed Whisker is out getting killed, almost immediately after he leaves, a fight is instigated with the old leader of RiverClan, Reed Whisker's mother Misty Star, and she dies as well. A second question comes up, assuming Reed Whisker's death was a murder, which we don't know it was, could Misty Star's death have been planned too? This is a lot less likely, but it's something to keep in mind. The main reason I call attention to this possibility in particular, even though from every angle it really does look unplanned, especially with Misty Star dying to what we can probably call a heart attack, even though we're not exactly sure what it was, it is because we know that even Frostpaw, a little tiny baby, can tell that she's frail and weak, more so than usual lately. A third thing to note, before I really get into it, is that the only connection RiverClan has right now with StarClan is Frostpaw, and she not only has no idea what she's doing, but she doesn't even seem to have a clear connection with StarClan at all. Anyways, what I want to do is go through every RiverClan cat and their involvement, so that we know what we're looking at. And there's a there's a few enough amount of RiverClan cats that we can actually do this, and that, that's kind of interesting to me, even though most of them really don't participate or say anything useful whatsoever. Misty Star was the incredibly elderly leader, and now she's dead. She died of what we can assume was a heart attack, even though we're not really sure what it actually was. She died during an argument with her clanmates, everyone involved being Brackenpelt, who started it, Duskfur, who continued it, Mosspelt, Havenpelt, Owlnose, and Shimmerpelt. So basically, if you've got Pelt in your name and your River Clan, you fought with Misty Star. We'll look at all of them in a minute. Reed Whisker, the deputy, Misty Star's son, went on a patrol with Podlight, Splashtail, and Curlfeather. Later, he was found dead under the cliff between River Clan territory and Two Lake Place. We see a scene in the new prologue where both of them are dead together in heaven, talking about how they can't do anything to help RiverClan. They imply that they can contact the other clans about it, but don't want to for fear of making RiverClan look vulnerable. Mothwing, the atheist medicine cat, who technically is not an atheist anymore, she's now very aware of the existence of StarClan, she just doesn't approve of it. She's still mourning her last apprentice, Willow Shine, and that shines through in the way that she treats Frostpaw. She's upset by every turn of events so far and almost slips into a panic when Reed Whisker is missing. She begrudgingly takes over her leader duties when the other two are dead and really doesn't seem suspicious whatsoever. Now, instead of going in order of allegiances for the rest of the cats, I'm splitting them into categories. The ones who went with Reed Whisker on patrol, the ones who argued with Misty Star, and then everyone else. First on the patrol cats, Fognose. Despite having been on the patrol, she is mentioned the least. She is only about a year old, and Splashtail, who was also on patrol, is her brother. When everyone's worried about Reed Whisker, she seems not to be, and points out how much prey they brought home instead. Podlight, brother to Curlfeather and son of Duskfur, is also not quite as important in the book, but certainly more of a presence than Fognose. 
He's very emotional upon learning Misty Star is dead and has a bit to say about how brave and cool she was. When it comes to the whereabouts of Reed Whisker, he only acts confused. He claims that they lost track of him, that they assumed the deputy had left to chase a rabbit. He's very insistent that Reed Whisker will come back, and he's generally supportive of Frostpaw. Additionally, when the subject of temporary leader comes up, he's one of the cats to initially volunteer. Splashtail is a big one. Fog knows his littermate, and also only about a year old, a little baby. He doesn't have much to say when the patrol comes back, but when a patrol sets out to find Reed Whisker, he's not happy about Frostpaw being in charge of it. Later, when Frostpaw is trying to lead the patrol down towards the Two Lake Place cliff, he makes an even bigger deal about not following her, calls her mouse-brained, and even tries to find excuses not to go down, saying, we could break our necks. But then the next time we see him, his attitude towards Frostpaw has changed completely, and Frostpaw even mentions that they used to be friends. This probably mostly means that they were friends while they were both still kits, as Splashtail was seemingly made a warrior before she even got to be an apprentice. There really just isn't room in the timeline for Frostpaw and Splashtail to be, like, friends in any sort of real way, because if they were both kits at the same time, that would be when, like, Frostpaw is like this itty bitty tiny baby kitten and otherwise I guess they could have been friends when he was like a, an apprentice and she was like a kit and he would like play with her or something like that and that would work too but it doesn't really designate anything real because you know all apprentices play with kids. Not to say that little kids can't be friends with big kids it's just um you know it, it feels almost like a meaningless fact at this point because Splashtail has been made a warrior before she was even made an apprentice. What I'm saying is it's not grounds to trust Splashtail on, that's what I'm trying to get at here. On a trip to the moon pool alone with Splashtail, on the way back she finds a feather designating her mother as the leader choice on the path. If someone placed it there, the only cat who really could have is Splashtail. After Curlfeather dies, he goes to fetch her body along with Duskfur and Malinose, and they report no sign of the dogs. He continues being nice to and worrying about Frostpaw in the new preview. And finally, Curlfeather. Curlfeather is the main character's mom, and throughout the book, this basically defines everything about her. She claims that the patrol tried and failed to track down Reed Whisker after he got separated, and nobody disagrees with her on this. During one of the book's full River Clan arguments, she tells Frostpaw to go back to her nest and rest, and at that point, Frostpaw actually finds a star-shaped leaf in her bedding. Then, when Frostpaw comes back with it, she goes, What do we have here? in the most suspicious way possible. Uh, side note, apparently warrior cats have some concept of cartoon star shapes. This further proves that they all should have Tail Chaser song-style stars on their foreheads, just like in Warriors of the Forest. Thank you. Uh, Curlfeather is also very eager to interpret this sign herself. Later, after Frostpaw gets two separate occurrences that she interprets as signs, forcing her to decide that Curlfeather should become leader, Curlfeather accepts it very instantly. But on the way to the moon pool, she's killed by dogs, telling her daughter, trust no cat, as her last words, implying that no matter what her involvement was, she knew something that Frostpaw didn't. Okay, our second category is Cats Who Fought With Misty Star. Starting with Brackenpelt, she was born in Vision of Shadows with her brother Owlnose. She's the one who approached her to begin with about the code changes. That said, that's all she does. Start it. Uh, Misty Star brings the argument to the entire clan, and that's the only word she gets in before her leader dies on stage. Next is Duskfur, Curlfeather's mother and Frostpaw's grandmother. Um, they don't really do much acknowledging that Duskfur is the grandmother. It's, it's kind of weird, and I really wish that Warrior Cats would just start saying the word grandmother. But anyways, she escalates the argument with Mis Misty Star more than anyone, and doesn't take notice of the leader getting more and more frustrated and worked up. Minotail confronts her about this afterwards, but she says nothing in response. Duskfur insists that Misty Star is getting her next life while she dies, but Mothwing confirms that the leader is done for. Later, Duskfur is the first to, nervously, suggest an acting leader. She thinks it should be Mothwing, and Mothwing does eventually assume that position. She's also involved in the decision to send Frostpaw to the moon pool with Splashtail, alongside her daughter Curlfeather and Mothwing. She also, later, implies some level of ambition to be leader when congratulating Curlfeather, but loses that after Curlfeather's death, alongside every other prospective cat. She's devastated after Curlfeather's death, and being her mother, probably wasn't involved in it. She goes to retrieve the body with Splashtail and Malinose. 
Moss Pelt, an elder, also participated in Misty Star's gathering. She's basically just grumpy about code changes. She doesn't really get involved in anything after that, aside from burying Misty Star's body, as is her duty. Haven Pelt also participates, but really just to suggest that code changes were only made because people like Crowfeather and Graystripe are code breakers, she's part of a patrol to ThunderClan to look for Reed Whisker and later agrees with Crowfeather's interpretation of the suspicious Leaf Star, but generally just doesn't seem suspicious herself. Owl knows Brackenpelt's brother shows up a lot, but not suspiciously so. He adds on to what Havenpelt says about Codebreakers, calling out Shadow Sight and Misty Star herself for being half clan, then later agrees that a temporary leader would be a good idea. He's negative about Frostpaw's position and questions why Reed Whisker wasn't leading the patrol. He's just generally around, conservative with his thoughts and ideas, but not really involved. Shimmerpelt is a senior warrior who appeared fully grown somewhere in the gap between Omen of the Stars and Vision of Shadows. She sucks up to Misty Star during the fight and talks at her funeral. Later, she announces she'd be happy to act as leader, and then the whole clan yells at her. It's hilarious. Also, she thinks Mothwing being an atheist is bad, but she, again, just doesn't seem involved in anything. And now for my third category. The rest of them. Icewing. She's a senior warrior. All she does, all book, is ask if there's someone who can look for Reed Whisker. She is shot down by Mothwing. Night Sky. He was Shimmerpelt's apprentice, and he is one of Icewing's several kids. He says RiverClan will survive and goes on a patrol to ShadowClan and basically nothing else. Malonose is an older warrior whose one positive thought in the book is medicine cats are smart. He tries to get in a fight with Podlight over who would be a better leader. He's also too prideful to accept another clan's help. He yells at Splashtail for suggesting RiverClan could be run by a committee, and he tells Frostpaw that she needs to go to the moon pool again right after she gets back from her mother dying horribly at the moon pool. Great guy. Lizardtail first shows up when they're sending out search parties. He was Reed Whisker's apprentice, and he's another cat who generated in between Oots and Avos. Sunbeam has him and Night Sky take Hop Whisker to RiverClan camp to get her paw looked at. Uh, he also tells Malinos and Podlight to shut up at some point, and that's about it. Gorseclaw is Lizardtail's son. He accuses Mothwing of having bees in her brain for having Frostpaw lead the patrol, and when Splashtail tries to discourage the party from going down the cliff, he shows them all how. He's the guy who eventually finds Reed Whisker's body, and then he stops appearing after that scene. Minnowtail is an older senior warrior, age-wise about the same as someone like Jayfeather. She doesn't show up much, she tries to confront Duskfur after Misty Star dies, and later is part of the ThunderClan patrol, and that's everything. Sneeze Cloud is part of the Shadow Clan patrol. Sunbeam assumes that it was Sneeze Cloud who found Reed Whisker and that Reed Whisker is fine, but Sneeze Cloud has secretly done nothing. Breezeheart, however, has done nothing at all, all book. She's lucky they even said her name. She's Graypaw's mentor. Meanwhile, Hair Light is the only River Clan cat that doesn't come up even once. He's nobody here, he's a name in the allegiances. Graypaw and Mistpaw talk to Frostpaw as a unit just before she goes to the moon pool for the first time, and then once more to cuddle her after their mother dies. Graypaw is also mean to Flamepaw at a gathering, which is hilarious and cool, but otherwise they're not really involved. And finally, we have Frostpaw herself. Frostpaw is a brand new baby medicine cat apprentice with no life experience and no idea what she's doing. It was her mother, Curlfeather, who noticed her visions, one about her father leaving her alone in camp, which was explained as a vision of his death a few days later, and one of a coming thunderstorm. We don't have any details about the thunderstorm vision whatsoever. Frostpaw's first meeting with StarClan, despite everything we've seen from other Warrior Cats protagonists, is weird. All she sees is a swirl of faces, one of which she assumes is Willowshine. It isn't even mentioned that she spoke to any of them. Later, when Misty Star dies, Mothwing pressures her to reach out to StarClan. She seems to see nothing but faint stars, green eyes, and the outline of ears and whiskers, which tell her that Misty Star is fine and to bury her. She tells Mothwing it was Willowshine, but she doesn't actually know. She tries to contact StarClan again later, but fails to get anything. Her memories give her a repeat of what she saw earlier, Misty Star saying, we must move on. She tells Mothwing this was a message, this being the second time she's told Mothwing something that she simply assumed about a vision-related experience. When delivering code changes to StarClan with the rest of the medicine cats, she is able to see just one cat in the swirl, a cat who acknowledges herself as Leopard Star. She tells Frostpaw where to find Reed Whisker's body, in a shadowy place within your own borders, and gives her the sounds of Two-Leg Place. Then Frostpaw almost falls in the moon pool. 
After they find Reed Whisker's body, a sign is found in Frostpaw's bed in the shape of a star. Her mother insists that this is a sign from Star Clan, and at the next opportunity, Frostpaw is sent to the moon pool again to ask them who the leader should be. She goes alone with Splashtail and can't get Star Clan to talk to her, but on the way back, she finds a curled feather on the path. Mothwing is unsure of the legitimacy of this sign, especially with what her brother Hawkfrost did, faking a sign to get her into a position of power, but when Frostpaw sleeps, she has a vision of a million little curled feathers surrounding the moon pool, which causes her to bring Curlfeather to get her nine lives. But on the way to the moon pool, her and Curlfeather are chased down by a bunch of huge, slobbery, brindle dogs. All dogs are huge to cats, though. Seeing as they're implied to be the same type of dog, I'd imagine there's something with a very high prey drive, like boxers. Not to immediately get distracted speculating on what breed of dog killed Frostpaw's mom, but, you know, brindle dogs, slobbery, high prey drive, I, 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 boxer sounds like a pretty good guess. Not really on the same level of detail as the ones from the first series where you're like, oh, this is just literally a Rottweiler because there's tons of large brindle dogs, but uh, I don't think like an English Mastiff really has the prey drive to go after a cat like that. And granted, if they're being like talked to by a cat and the cat's like, hey, go chase a, go chase this cat for me and the dog's like, okay. I mean, any dog would probably do that. So, you know, the, the prey drive probably doesn't actually factor in if, if there's a cat involved here. Anyways, Curlfeather pushes Frostpaw to climb the tree ahead of her, but she gets pulled down and mauled by the dogs. Frostpaw gets away by going from tree to tree. She gets home and gets to be traumatized for a few days before people start telling her she needs to go back to the moon pool again to figure out who the next leader should be. So what the heck is going on here? I'd argue that we don't actually have enough information to know that. I think they've very purposefully not given us any real leads, this being the first book. And I'd imagine that all of these mysteries are not going to be solved in the next book, but instead in the third book. But I'm going to throw a dart anyways, because I, I'm super likely to be completely wrong no matter what I say here. In fact, I'm very frequently super wrong about all of the things I say on my YouTube channel. But, uh, I figure we'll, we'll go for it anyway. First of all, on the subject of Frostpaw's Star Clan connection, I believe that her mother Curlfeather used coincidences from when she was a young kit to insist that her daughter was having visions of the future. Additionally, I'm guessing that her connection with Star Clan is at, well, normal levels? Like the kind of levels that, you know, any random cat would have with Star Clan. We never really see a visit to Star Clan from the perspective of a cat who doesn't have a connection with them, but at the same time, Warrior Cats has, for a few series at least, been insisting to us that it's a necessary element in a potential medicine cat. Alderpaw's strong spiritual connection was the reason given for why he was forced into that position. If we reframe a level of spiritual power as a requirement for any medicine cat, as opposed to just a bonus, it clears up a lot of things that Warrior Cats keeps implying, but never outright says. Especially a lot of situations where medicine cats are really dwelling on if or not they're going to take an apprentice. Additionally, it explains why Frostpaw struggles so much to connect with her ancestors. She has no spiritual power, and Mothwing can't exactly double-check if she's a good choice with StarClan, as medicine cats seem to do when choosing an apprentice, because she has no connection with StarClan herself. This is a great opportunity for Curlfeather to place her daughter as the new medicine cat. This could easily lead into why this arc is called a Starless Clan, because Mothwing doesn't communicate with ancestors, and... Frostpaw can't very easily or very well connect with her ancestors. And I would actually be especially excited if they canonized this as, you know, the level of connection an average cat has without any sort of, like, spiritual significance designating them as a medicine cat. The idea of Frostpaw just being normal and not having any special talent for it is, you know, kind of compelling, especially compared to the possibility of, like, the 14th really special medicine cat apprentice in a row. A big worry from people that I've talked to about this going forward is the idea that we're getting a second plot of Dark Forest involvement. But I'm actually just not seeing it. A lot of what's happening with Frostpaw specifically is that she's trying and failing repeatedly to get clear visions from Star Clan or Signs, to the point where she's misreading her own memories as visions and just assuming that what she's seeing is this cat or another. 
But when she does manage to scrape her way into a Star Clan vision, Star Clan is nothing but helpful to her. Not helpful in a way that has backlash or causes a bigger problem. Quote unquote Willow Shine tells her that Misty Star made it to Star Clan safely. Le Leopard Star at the Moon Pool tells her where to find Reed Whiskers' body with no problems. There's no reason for an evil force to do either of those things. Additionally, every sign or conversation she's had with StarClan seems to have worked almost against whatever force has been causing trouble in RiverClan. I think her feather dream, the one she has after visiting the moon pool, is also very possibly either real or just a dream that she has because she's thinking and focusing so desperately on getting a sign. Alternatively, there's a theory that's been suggested that Frostpod does have prophetic dreams, but only about cats who are about to die. She has a dream about curled feathers scattered around the moon pool, and then curl feather dies on the way to the moon pool. That said, it doesn't really explain why her connection to Star Clan is so forced and hazy. Why she can't talk to Star Clan at all at least two out of the five times that she tries, once at the moon pool, and with one of those five times being a situation where she's just seeing faces in a swirling mist. Whatever the issue with Frostpaw is, she cannot connect with StarClan in the same way another cat can, and it's not on StarClan's end, because Reed Whisker and Misty Star in StarClan do discuss the option of going to someone else. Secondarily, Reed Whisker's murder. There's no way that some of these cats weren't involved. Curlfeather at least knows something, that's why she tells her to trust no cat. There wouldn't be a reason to say that otherwise. On top of that, Curlfeather's been the most suspicious one this whole time. She almost certainly had a hand in planting the star-shaped dock leaf in Frostpaw's nest, and the book wants you to be suspicious of her. I think an important element is that when Frostpaw sees Reed Whisker's body, she says it looks like he was attacked by a badger, but Curlfeather dismisses it instantly. I think that this immediately implies an animal was involved, with the fact that it's specifically not mentioned to resemble cat scratches as a big clue. I believe that Reed Whisker was taken out by the same dogs that killed Curlfeather. The question is really, are these random dogs? There's no way. The members of Reed Whisker's patrol would never cover up the fact that dogs got him if they were worried about random dog attacks. There's also the possibility that they actually didn't know that Reed Whisker had died like they imply, but in combination with Curlfeather's last message, there's something going on and she, at the very least, was involved with it. The second question is if or not Misty Star's death was planned or wanted. I'm leaning towards no. While some cats like Duskfur were ruthless in the face of Misty Star's clear instability with the argument, I don't think anyone knew that she would die if yelled at enough today. Everyone knew that Misty Star was frail and old and weak. To become the next leader, you wouldn't need to take out Misty Star, you would need to take out Reed Whisker, who hypothetically could live quite a few more years as leader, especially lately with warrior cats implying that the leader lives expand your lifespan. You would be made deputy, serve for a good few months under Misty Star, and then transition smoothly into leader. All if uh, you get rid of Reed Whisker first. Why replace Reed Whisker? Well, if most of the clan opposes the new code changes that Misty Star and the Lights in the Mist have embraced, I think it's easy to assume that Reed Whisker, Misty Star's son, would have embraced those code changes too. That said, I can see this being planned exclusively if there's some element we're missing that we just don't have any evidence of. Like, if Misty Star had been poisoned. But I think that everyone's reactions to her death are, from what we can tell, legitimate surprise and, you know, legitimate being upset. Something else to go over. The books also want you to think that Splashtail is involved, especially considering how he has been involved and mentioned in almost every situation. He has a sudden attitude change towards Frostpaw between her leading the patrol to find Reed Whisker's body, which it's almost implied he doesn't want anyone to find, and taking her to the moon pool to get a sign. My gut wants to believe that someone else is in charge, though, or at the very least, someone else is in charge of killing Curlfeather. Like I've said before, Splashtail is a baby. He's younger than cats like Nightheart and Rootspring. He's a year old. And while that doesn't mean that someone can't be evil or can't be clever, it does feel like a bit of a strange age to be participating in succession drama. Additionally, he has had no apprentice and currently has no chance at one, as there are no kits and no queens in RiverClan. Even if he was going to be a mentor, he doesn't have the six months to wait to become a deputy. 
That said, he seems like he's not fully on the same page as cats like Curlfeather, especially when it comes to situations like Frostpaw's potential involvement in that patrol. And his new interest in looking out for Frostpaw definitely seems as if they're trying to set something up. But I feel that we simply don't have enough information on him or the other patrol cats to make a good conclusion, although Pudlight acts basically just as suspicious. The unanswerable question is that if he planted that feather, what was his motivation? Was it part of a plan to get Curlfeather and Frostpaw out of the way, killing both of them with the dogs, so that things could proceed without StarClan's involvement? Or was he legitimately on Curlfeather's side, trying to plant her as the new leader? In the preview for the next book, he is trying to encourage Frostpaw to get back on her feet and, presumably, go back to the Moon Pool to figure out who the new leader should be. I have no idea what the potential evil motivation behind this could be when he seemingly, and no one seemingly, has any way to dictate what the moon pool says to Frostpaw. I mean, of course, unless just, you know, another leaf is going to be planted and they're going to be like, oh, leaf pelt, of course. But there is another little element here that I haven't mentioned yet. Over in ShadowClan, our friend and best protagonist Sunbeam is in a whole heap of tasty and delicious relationship drama. We don't really need to get into it because these stories are largely not connected at all, but she has a friend that she's been fighting with. Lightly. Around the same time, or after Reed Whisker goes missing, Sunbeam hears a cat yelling and fighting in the distance. She approaches the sound, but decides it's too dangerous and too far away, even noticing it might have been on RiverClan territory, and she turns around only to find Lightleap, who claims she stepped on a thorn. Lightleap doesn't look injured to her. Honestly, while Lightleap is acting weird, I think if Reed Whisker was attacked by a cat, it would be obvious in his scratches. Additionally, I don't think Lightleap has any reason that we currently know about to be involved in RiverClan's weird succession business at all, or that cats like Curlfeather would be so quick to try and cover up Reed Whisker's death and area of death if he was killed by a seemingly random outsider. That said, it could be that, you know, the involvement of a Shadow Clan cat killing Reed Whisker was going to be some sort of like war or fight they try to start after they get somebody new appointed as the deputy or, or something like that, but it's really convoluted and there's no evidence for it so far. And how in the world, how in the absolute world, would they convince a Shadow Clan cat? to kill their deputy when that's an incredibly just just an incredibly silly act of war to commit in warrior cats like like that's really really high up on the we are starting a fight with your clan and everything's just going to go to hell especially when there's no reason to bring in another cat to kill her they could have had any number of cats on that patrol, any number of people kill Reed Whisker together if they really wanted to. Like, if they wanted a cat to kill Reed Whisker, there's no reason to bring in a new Shadow Clan cat. But I don't think it was a cat. We have a precedent for cats controlling the behavior of dogs, between Tiger Star planting prey to lead them to a camp, and multiple characters being able to speak enough dog to have at least a little control over them. It's not an out there idea that a cat could be directing the dogs, and while it's only a theory of mine that it was the dogs both times, I don't think it's possible that the second dog attack was random. If I were to pin this all on a RiverClan cat who's in charge, it's got to be one who, in my opinion, was actually qualified to be made deputy. That said, Curlfeather wasn't, and she's never had an apprentice listed. That doesn't mean that she can't have had one off screen at some point, knowing warrior cats, but I feel it might disqualify her from ever, like, actually being in charge of whatever operation RiverClan cats were trying to pull off by killing Reed Whisker, assuming, again, that it actually was an operation and not someone falling in a hole. Keep in mind that we don't actually have enough information to know what really happened here at all. Specifically disqualified from being made deputy on this rule are Haven Pelt, Podlight, Fognose, Hairlight, Owlnose, Gorseclaw, and Night Sky. And to put more pressure on this assumption, Reed Whisker's whole patrol that day was made up of cats who could have never been made deputy if he had died. 
Additionally, whatever this plan was, I'm assuming it was put in place before Frostpaw was apprenticed. And I'm assuming putting a cat that can be influenced in the position of Medicine Cat Apprentice was an element of this, with Mothwing having no Starclan connection. This means that even though Brackenpelt and Breezeheart currently have apprentices, I don't think that it could have been, you know, that they were planned to be the new deputy either. That said, and I know I said at the beginning that I wouldn't do this, but I wouldn't put it past the authors to simply forget that a deputy needs to first have had an apprentice. I, I tried, I tried really, really hard not to bring up um, the writing quality in this video and just look at the quote-unquote facts, but I, I just can't help it. We could be looking right now at a nonsense rule, especially when nobody at all in ThunderClan pointed out that Barry Nose has never had one when he was wrongfully appointed deputy by Ashbur last series. That said, I'm going to keep going on this tangent even though it's completely possible that the authors don't care none of these characters have had apprentices and technically are not even qualified for the position of deputy if they kill Reed Whisker. My first assumption is that it's probably Duskfur who was initially in charge, or the candidate for deputy, who kept pushing Misty Star while she got more and more upset during the argument. But would Duskfur kill her own daughter? Absolutely not. Uh, but I think that there's consideration to be made that whoever's behind this, assuming both Curlfeather and Splashtail were in originally involved, is that they're not exactly on the same page anymore. I don't think that the cats who did this intended for Misty Star to die at all, and that Frostpaw finding Reed Whisker's body, which wasn't intended to be found, wasn't in their original plan. But also, if Curlfeather was killed by dogs that Duskfur was aware of in any way, she wouldn't be keeping her mouth shut, doing nothing but being sad afterwards. I'm sure Duskfur did not want Curlfeather to die, so I don't think she could have been involved. But at the same time, the person being made deputy doesn't need to be involved anyways. Curlfeather could have been planning to get her mother made deputy. She could have been planning anything. Additionally, aside from Duskfur, the other minor characters in RiverClan are just that, minor. Splashtail and Curlfeather get a lot of attention, but a lot of senior warriors who are actually qualified for the position, such as Minnowtail, Icewing, and Sneezecloud, yes, you heard me right, Sneezecloud is a qualified senior warrior, are only mentioned a handful of times at most. The only other two reasonable candidates are Mallownose, Shimmerpelt, and Lizardtail, why did I say two, there are three, who, while they are all around all book, none of them stand out as suspicious. I guess if I were to look at one with a bigger raised eyebrow than the others, it would be Mallownose, who, while not suspicious, has mostly negative interactions with everyone around him all book. But I don't think that there's room to know. It's much more likely, in my opinion, that if this is a murder, the authors conveniently forgot about the deputy apprentice rule again, or somebody like Splashtail is just a... Such a silly little kitty that he thinks a one-year-old apprentice-free baby is going to have the deputy position when half the camp is qualified for it. The last idea I want to go over is one that I really don't want to be true. That there's some level of involvement from an outside force. Aside from people being attacked by dogs, which is clearly an outside force, I don't know if we have a hint of this at all. We're going to have to wait and see, but there's no character that we have seen that is not a pack of brindle dogs um, that could be involved in any of this. Obviously, we could get introduced to them in the next book. They could say, hey, you know that throwaway line about Tiger Star talking about a weird kitty pet thing in ShadowClan that's never brought up by any other character, even though we have a point of view in ShadowClan? Yeah, that guy, he's got, um, he's got dogs. They could do that, but like... I hope not. The thing of it is, is that at this point, they could introduce any element. They could say, oh yeah, by the way, Ice Cloud, who has barely said two words in this book. Ice Cloud um, actually orchestrated this whole thing, and we didn't give you any hints because one, Ice Cloud is a really good actor, and two, we didn't want you to find that out that early. And that's really just all it would take. I'm sure all of my assumptions in this video will be disproven in a little under a month when the book comes out, but for now, it's fun to speculate, so let me know what you think in the comments.